student days, I also used to have longer hair, <laughs> right? I used to use a, what is called that, a headband during the exam period. Others use, uh, right like this, all hair comes in front, it disturbs you. So I put a headband there and one of my professors also told me, advised me, good, nice to keep a good uh, long hair trying to imitate George Harrison, because those days George Harrison was, you, you have heard about George Harrison. Yes, yes, so well, uh, take care of your hair, keep it clean, this, that, so that's what I'm repeating to you. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so from hair dressing to chemical dressing, right? Chemical dressing, uh, we have been talking about mill scale removal. So, we have seen the mechanical methods, some of uh, natural method, flame treatment, mechanical and there is a chemical method. So, it is uh, referred to as chemical dressing or acid pickling. Essentially, we take help of uh, uh, so called chemical reaction by which uh, you, uh, uh, whatever oxide layer is there that is dissolved out. So, in this process, as the name suggests, that means we will have to have some acid bath the plate material is to be subjected to a kind of a acid bath. There we subjected to some mechanical means, mechanical force by which we uh, remove the, um, uh, those uh, oxide layer. Here schematically it would be like this, that means first you take in a acid bath, this acid bath is, well what acid do you think will be suitable? Okay, somebody says H2SO4. Okay, that's fine. Anything else? HCl. Anything else? Well, we do not go for any other complicated acids. There are very two common acids, H2SO4 or HCl. One of these are basically used. Both have their own positive negative aspect. We will talk about that little later. So, once a acid bath is given. So, what happens? There is uh, ferrospheric salts, they react with the acid and go into the solution. So, this process of going into the solution that will tell us which acid is more preferable. We will see that later. So, once this bath is given, then obviously, I will have to take it out, right? I will take it out and put it where? A wash has to be given, water wash because what about traces of, because when you are taking it out of uh, acid bath, it will have to clean it from the acid. If acid traces remain, that will corrode. So, a water bath. Now, what do you think should be the next treatment? <coughs> not really, because after giving water bath, still you are not sure that whether traces of acid is remaining or not, there might be. So, if traces remain, they will corrode. So, alkali bath, right. And once again a alkali bath means it should be followed by a water bath, because you will have to clean it. So, here you can see in, 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 in short blasting we have seen there is a, a question of dirt and dust and noise and here acid, alkali, water, quite a messy affair, okay. Well, what about next what it should be? So, I can include the first water bath and directly. Yeah, directly alkali, then lot of alkali will be wasted, you know, to protect alkali, because then acid uh, it will react with the alkali, that is why. So, after water bath when I am taking, then there can be few traces only, so that is why. But in the process, you need lot of water that is there, but still water would be cheaper than the alkali. So, that is how. Uh, had water been costlier, then probably straight away go for alkali. Like in Germany, uh, and in Germany a bottle of water is costlier than a bottle of beer. 
So you can choose what you want to drink. <laughs> anyway, so that is how it is. Uh, alkali, uh, water bath. After water bath, what should be there? Dry. Not dry immediately because after alkali bath, what we are getting now? We are getting that same steel material as we got from after short blasting. That means bright, clean surface. So some kind of priming. So here it should be compatible with the process. There that spray priming, painting was compatible with the process. So here also some kind of chemical treatment. So that chemical treatment is referred to as passivizing bath. You make the surface passive, right? There we protected it by providing a paint, a coat of paint. Here I am protecting it by a uh, a chemical reaction which is forming a protective layer on the surface, making the surface passive. So that is referred to as passivizing bath. That means the surface is becoming passive. So, um, well, so in the pro, uh, after 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 it has been passivized then you just take it out. There is no need of drying because the water will dry off automatically after the passivizing bath. Well, after the passivizing bath, one can give a, a kind of a, uh, another round of water wash. So, another final water bath and take it out. So, what happens in this, as you can see, the material should be moving over the, over these various baths. So, it is, it can be something like this, right, and it moves. That means, you have a mechanism, that means, this entire one after the other, this chemical or treatment baths, this will be housed in one big hall having a overhead crenage facility. So here you hang the plates, take them, dip them in the bath for the required time, take it out, goes in the next bath, whole process can be programmed and made automated. So again this process is also an automated process. Though it is hazardous, but well, it will take proper precautions. That means, once it is made totally automated, so there is not much of need of human intervention inside. Like when you are doing short blasting, nobody is present inside those chambers, not needed. Similarly, even if this can be properly controlled, all the process parameters and the whole operation can be made automated. So, no physical presence is needed of any worker inside the hall. So, he is not exposed to all these hazardous chemicals or the fumes, right. So, that is how this process works. Now, Sir, is it just that you dip, dip in the whole thing and take it away? Yes, yes, yes. So, we come to that. Here, then we see, we start with the first, uh, uh, first uh, sort of operation that is the acid bath. So, acid bath, what all things we will have to look into there. That means, first we will have to choose the type of acid, what acid to be used, right? What acid to be used? Now, tell me, you have already told or we have talked about two possibilities, H2SO4 and HCl. Now, which one? Because it should be either this or that. It cannot be both. Which one? Well, it is like this. I mean, what is the process happening there? It is essentially it is reacting with the ferrous uh, oxides and forming some salts. And how that salt is removed? It is getting dissolved. So, the salt should have a good solubility because it does not have a good solubility. Then, what will happen when I dip the plate, take it up? It may have reacted, but the salts may be sticking to the surface is it has not got removed. So, a, we should be a, looking for such an acid which will uh, form more soluble salts. HCl is a preferred one because chloride salts 
have better solubility than sulphate salts, right. Chloride are more easily soluble. So, from that point of view, HCl is preferred. Salts are soluble. Salt solubility is better. All right. Now, what are the other aspects? Other aspects would be how much consumption of these acids, because that is also another factor in the in the overall uh, well economics of the process. How much it is consumed? Now, what we see is that. Uh, this consumption rate of the acid depends on uh, also depends on um, apart from the reaction there are other factors like uh, before consumption if we talk about how much time it takes for the reaction to take place we find it is uh, it depends on the temperature of the bath. If we increase the temperature I have a faster reaction rate. Right? So, if we increase the temperature, we have a faster reaction rate. So, let us uh, take a look first at uh, how, how these two acids they react, then again we will come back to this which acids to be used, <coughs> maybe uh, through a simple graphical representation, we can see that uh, uh, somewhat like this, um, this is this represents HCl with uh, 10 percent, HCl 5 percent, This is pickling time. Uh, this is temperature. Well, here this 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 plot what we have drawn. It is uh, the well the pickling time. Let me mention is from around ten to roughly about seventy minutes. Well, here I have tried to show the trends. It's not exactly you measure from this. It's not exact, but it's a general trend like this. That means what we see that uh, this this percentages are the concentration of the acid. So, how much pickling time that is my production time right we will definitely would like to have it as low as possible because then my production rate is faster. So, we see that with the acid concentration reducing obviously pickling time will increase with temperature increasing pickling time is reducing. So, obviously we try to uh, uh, keep a higher concentration as well as at, at a higher temperature such that I have a lesser pickling time, right. But well, there is a limitation, you cannot go on increasing the concentration of acid also. So, what is observed generally that one uses a, a, of the order of 15 percent concentration one starts with. Now, the process is a continuous process. So, you start with a 15 percent concentration over period it drops. So, as it is dropping, then what is happening? As it is dropping, your pickling time has to be increased. That means, to make the process automated and fully assured that it is exactly just corroding away the scale and not the metal, like same thing, there the energy of the pellets was such that it is only chipping off the surface mill scale. Same thing has to be done. Proper process control as towards uh, uh, controlling the parameters. So, the control parameters would be uh, of this uh, process control parameters would be well 
the acid concentration right concentration of acid well then the time well the temperature all right and of course agitation of the bath agitation of the bath by that i mean that acid has to be continuously stirred continuously agitated either agitated the bath or agitated the plate material that helps in the reaction process that helps in the sol uh, removal process of the salts right so these are the aspects to be controlled and as we can see with time the that means as the uh, we, we with time the concentration of acid will fall because it will uh, react with the thing so the pickling time has to increase right for a given temperature for a given term temperature we do not temper with we keep a we fix a temperature generally a temperature level of uh, temperature level of around 35 degrees centigrade is used i mean there is no hard and fast rule about it but it has been observed that if we go for hcl at 35 degrees centigrade it's good what does that mean it's good that means we see a, a a comfortable reaction time right and also there is another aspect here as we see that the pickling time is naturally more for h2so4 right so a preferred choice is hcl but from the cost point of view hcl works out expensive because it's more volatile there is loss takes place by evaporation and that loss increases much with increasing temperature so if i could have gone up to 60 degrees centigrade it would have been even better from production point of view but the loss of hcl would have been too much so that's how probably a uh, compromise is that you keep the temperature at a level of 35 degrees centigrade wherein we we make a compromise of the loss due to volatile effect of the acid at that elevated temperature vis a vis the pickling time the productivity because if i do not have the temperature raised i may i will i may save some of hcl right but in the process i have production time elongated so there i lose so that is how that that is that is how uh, this uh, temperature is kept at 35 degree centigrade so we see that in this process hcl is a preferred one because here the salt solubility is better right and also we see that the pickling time is less right less pickling time less pickling time though the the consumption of acid will be more compared to h2so4 in case of hcl but still will have overall economics works in favor of hcl right consumption would be more right but overall economics will be better overall economic can be achieved with hcl so that is how hcl is preferred and now so we see that in this process the control parameters as we have mentioned that we'll have to have a proper process control that means we'll have to have mechanism to monitor the concentration of the acid bath continuously and it has to be properly agitated the acid bath because if it is not agitated then the concentration on the bath at various points will differ so there should be a uniform homogeneous composition of the acid all over so monitoring of that continuously with time so it will have to have a proper process developed such that as it monitors that the concentration is falling from 10 to say it's it will gradually fall it's not a step function 
it will gradually fall. So, accordingly gradually you will have to as it is falling you have to increase the pickling time. So, that that should go automated then only it will uh, function properly and temperature well as we mentioned we maintain a elevated temperature depending on what temperature you are maintaining your pickling time concentration all those thing will be affected. Well, so that is what is the acid bath. So, we use the it is preferable to use HCl it does not mean that you cannot use HCl support. There are uh, places where people use for some reason of their own H2SO4 also possible. If you are not, if you can afford to have a longer pickling time, okay, that H2SO4 may work out more economic. That is the thing. If your product production rate requires that you will have to produce so much within a certain period of time and which cannot be achieved by H2SO4, then well, one have to go for HCl. So, that is how. So, once that is done, you need water bath. This water cleaning is done. This cleaning is flowing water. It has to be flowing water. It is not a stagnant water because then again cleaning is not done properly. So, that is another uh, difficulty of this process means it should be uh, having good huge amount of water obviously. Any shipyard will be located in a uh, in front of any uh, it will have a water front, but well not necessarily any water can be used. It has to be some bit of treated water, not necessarily distilled water, but treated water. Then comes alkali bath. In the alkali, it is uh, essentially alkali of uh, soda ash or what is that calcium hydroxide bath is used, right. There is a uh, because here the whole purpose of the alkali bath is nothing but uh, nothing but uh, just to so called neutralize the traces of acid whatever is there. So, obviously you go for the cheapest one and possibly calcium hydroxide is one of the easily available and the cheapest alternative which can be used. Uh, so, this uh, um, ne neutralizing bath uh, is uh, there, there again the process is same that you will have to just, just keep it dipped for a certain period of time. Obviously, here time factor is not that important neither a longer time is needed because it is only any acid trace coming in contact with alkali it will immediately react and it is done. That means, it is just question of dipping, agitating and taking out right. The whole process of agitating is such that it gets a good mixing with the uh, plate surface and the alkali bath right. Next water wash and then goes to the pacifizing bath. In the pacifizing uh, thing uh, what is used is a there are various uh, I mean types of chemicals. It is also a kind of a acid bath, but a acid which reacts with the steel surface now right. So, pacifizing bath that comprises of a acid bath however, which reacts with the steel surface. There the acid was reacting in the previous case with the mill scale. Now, this acid is reacting with the steel surface because after the alkali bath we are getting the clean fresh shining steel surface. So, this will form a salt right which will be passive in nature that salt should be passive in nature and should adhere to the surface. Previously we used the acid such that it reacts with the surface, surface was mill scale and forms a salt which is soluble in water. So, here I have to have the salt forming which is insoluble which is fairly hard in its sort of property that means should have the necessary abrasion resistance 
necessary hardness should have a good bonding with the surface. Good bonding with the surface means the surface layer gets that surface layer forms that salt and it does not get detached. The surface is sort of a kind of uh, it reacts in a sense it gets corroded in that sense, but that corroded material should remain on the surface thereby protecting and that 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 should should be neutral in nature neutral in nature means will not corrode further provide the necessary resistance to corrosion make the surface passive and subsequent other two uh, properties obviously it should have that means like after priming we talked about it should not interfere with the cutting welding process same thing true here also it should not interfere with that cutting and welding process so the acid used here is uh, essentially a phosphoric acid bath with alcohol around 20 around 23 to 25 percent phosphoric acid in a ethyl alcohol bath of uh, 19 to 20 percent ethyl alcohol. Nineteen to twenty percent. So this is a well. This is one just 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 we are talking about uh, pacifying bath. There are various different type of patented pacifying bath. That means you do not know. I mean there is a patented bath, but one of the common is you use a essentially a phosphoric acid bath with ethyl alcohol, right? So this gives you the necessary uh, uh, surface which becomes passive towards marine environment, essentially becoming passive towards marine environment. It is protecting the steel from further corrosion, right. But obviously, at the end of construction again that same surface has to be protected with uh, necessary painting scheme, etcetera, because it also has a life like that of priming paint. So, thereby we say that this is uh, the another method of uh, mill scale removal which is acid pickling also a mechanized quite an effective and uh, efficient method. So, what are the what could be the drawbacks in this? Like we have seen in, in case of your uh, short blasting the drawbacks were, were that it could cause a uh, work hardening of the surface leading to cracks developing, it could deform the plates, right. Similarly, here the drawbacks could be that if this uh, process control is not done properly, right, if we cannot, uh, if, if we fail to control these parameters same thing there, if you fail to control the parameter angle of impact, the force of impact. Similarly here, the pickling time corresponding to the temperature and course concentration of acid, it may lead to under, yeah, under reaction that means some traces of mill scale may remain or it may lead to over reaction, part of the plate may get corroded. So, that is one difficulty here we have which needs to be sort of uh, properly controlled. Another difficulty in this is it is essentially much more hazardous compared to your short blasting process, much more hazardous because uh, hazardous in the sense that disposal of the consumed acid, the disposal of the consumed alkali because that acid is getting uh, sort of uh, so called consumed you have to go on replenishing uh, fresh hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid to bring up the concentration because over the use say from the morning 8 o'clock shift it starts by 12 o'clock the, the concentration has gone down 
you will have to again add acid and lot of sludge is forming that sludge will be acidic sludge that salt which will remain it will be it has to be removed acid. So, disposal of that becomes obviously some environmental concern as well as the alkali and uh, alkali bath that alkali material also has to be disposed. Whereas, in short blasting that that problem is somewhat less because it is iron oxide which will be the leftover in case of which is which needs to be uh, so called disposed and iron oxide is not environmentally hazardous right it can well go in the soil. So, that is other problem here that means it is potentially a little more hazardous process and also it requires as we can see too many water baths. So, it needs a huge volume of water is needed quite a huge volume of uh, water is needed in this process that is other problem. So, these are the two uh, uh, basic problem and uh, finally, well as, as uh, we have uh, mentioned that uh, the process is automated uh, by way of hanging it from an overhead crane, you go on moving it one after another uh, bath you will dip the thing, but this whole thing is enclosed in a sort of a chamber, not only a chamber, a shop that means a huge hall. So, that hole will be full of this acidic fumes as well as alkaline fumes. So, that will affect that overhead structure the crane and all that means the overall corrosion possibility of the equipment inside the hole increases that means the life of this crane and other uh, equipment also has needs to be taken into account in the entire process. So, that is another problem here. Well, those are the so called disadvantages. What would be the merits of this process? There should be some merits also. Automated. Auto automated, well, it is automated definitely. And if we compare with, with the other process, because when you talk about merit, it always works no out in comparison. No so, here obviously, there is no noise pollution, it is a quite a silent process. So, there is no noise hazard as such. Second, there is no question of work hardening that problem we faced in case of short blasting that means, the surface was getting work hardened that is not happening, there is no question of work hardening taking place here. Uh, next advantage could be that there is no question of deformation of thinner plates, there in short blasting we have seen that the thinner plates rather it is difficult to do salt blasting operation on thinner plate materials, rather it is not advisable even at times. But in, in case of uh, acid pickling, whether it is a 2 millimeter sheet or 20 millimeter plate, it does not make much difference. Right? All the thing obviously, you have to control all the process parameters properly. So, there you do not uh, run the risk of damaging the plate, deforming the plate or corroding the plate. So, that is what is the advantageous uh, point of this uh, uh, acid pickling or the chemical dressing. And finally, uh, since the surface it is uh, protected by passivizing, so there also uh, depending on how uh, this operation has been uh, done, one gets a highly passive surface that means, uh, well, it, it gives a necessary protection till the construction is over and you are painting uh, uh, further protection by way of painting is provided. So, that is how we see that among all these processes your uh, short blasting and chemical pickling these are the two <laughs> process which works out to be effective short blasting and well it can be termed as acid pickling. They are the two processes of removing mill scale from the steel material uh, which um, uh, uh, for, for removing mill scale from the steel material it makes, makes these two most effective methods. 
of this depending on well at different places you have either salt blasting or acid pickling generally both not necessarily is used we have seen it has both plus and minus both of them so it depends on the uh, one can say on the shipyard's choice to have one of them obviously one distinct advantage of acid pickling is it is irrespective of plate thickness it can work that is a distinct disadvantage of short blasting method right also in acid pickling you do not run the risk of work hardening and eventual surface cracking because surface crack those cracks will be hairline cracks very minute cracks only on the surface as such they are benign as such they do not create any problem but if the same material is subjected to subsequent fatigue loading then those benign cracks may become the crack uh, may become the locations for further crack generation and subsequent crack propagation right so that's how those cracks are definitely not benign in that sense because the plate material being used for ship building purpose for ships or offshore platforms it's quite normal and natural that they will be subjected to fatigue loading fatigue loading as you know is nothing but reversal of stress so in the service condition it will be subjected so that way that is one one aspect which has to be thoroughly taken care of while doing short blasting operation which is not that in case of acid pickling obviously but again disadvantage as we see that it, it is a uh, somewhat more hazardous from the point of though we are saying that you need not to have any person inside the hall but in reality that level of mechanization at times becomes difficult a person has to go in operate the crane look after the things so he will be continuously exposed to that acid fume in the hall which is definitely not very healthy so that problem is there requirement if water is very high that is another disadvantage in this so uh, and finally disposal of the waste which is generated from the process disposal of the waste that is also another problematic so it's in fact difficult to pinpointedly say that which one is superior to the other taking all factors into consideration so that's why we see that depending on shipyard choice depending on availability of other supporting materials etc water etc one can have a choice for acid pickling or can have a choice for short blasting best would have been probably having both then one could have derived the advantage of advantages of both from this well so that is what is your uh, we um, come to an end of that uh, activity of plate preparation so this was uh, plate preparation and next we will move over to what would be the next operation logical operation plate cutting so we'll come to the plate cutting plate plate cutting operation and plate cutting well just uh, we'll take it up in the next class however little introduction to this this split plate cutting what all types of methods can be used right one is obviously a mechanical cutting this is a mechanical cutting right here you mind you we are talking about cutting steel plates aluminum plates such material right and of the dimension of 10 meter long plates right of that so mechanical cutting obviously it's not question of cutting using a hacksaw or a power saw definitely it's not there mechanical cutting means by shearing right we'll talk about that then uh, there can be a case of thermal cutting by thermal cutting it can be oxystylene it can be plasma it can be laser right that means using a heat source using heat uh, heat energy we do the cutting thermal cutting 
is there any other method of cutting you have heard about these are the two well very common or rather obvious make chemical uh, not really in this case another is maybe we will not I have not heard about which is referred to as water jet cutting water jet that means you use a jet of water very high energy water jet which will cut through the steel plate so you can imagine the energy there as you know water jets are used to disperse crowd is not it one takes a shower that is also a water jet but it is so pleasant to take a shower but you increase the <laughs> energy of that you will not stand below that further you increase it will pierce through your head so that is what is water jet cutting so thick steel plates can be cut with a jet of water right not thin thick steel plates so these are the three basic methods of which obviously most widely used is the thermal cutting but a day may come when water jet also will be equally used only difficulties of water jet using these days is it is uh, still quite expensive process though the raw material is only water but it is expensive uh, and well probably and lot of water that is another thing lot of water is needed it is there all that thing is there but still it, it has not uh, it is being used it has a lot of advantages certainly well so we continue in the next you have a class now right okay.